Welcome to The Storytellers, the radio show and podcast that features those who choose to leave their mark on the world through the art of story. I'm your host, Grace Salmon. I look forward to our time together today. Now, let's meet our storyteller. Michelle Burgess is passionate about books that inspire and fuel the soul and the mind. She is the founder of Book Queens, an online bookstore where she focuses on books on African-American culture. She is still solidly rooted in California, where she was born and raised. As a child, she read Maya Angelou's fabulous book, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, and that was a jumping off point for a lifelong adventure of joy and intrigue around books. She also has an interesting relationship with tea and fine china, which we'll talk about, which started with her grandmother. So whether you're meeting Michelle through book queens, as a bookseller, as a custom-made herbalist queen for teas, you're going to have a great book buying experience. Michelle, thank you for coming to the Storyteller Microphone. Thank you. Good morning, Grace, for that wonderful introduction. I really appreciate you having me here this morning. Well, I'm thrilled to be with you. And you first caught my attention through Instagram. And the reason you caught my attention was your absolute passion for books and these amazing book boxes, which I just want every single one. So talk about that, please. Well, great. Um, thank you for following us on Instagram. It is one of our channels uh, that we utilize for social media. And we have met a lot of fabulous people like yourself uh, through the Instagram. So I, I really appreciate uh, you following us. Um, well, the book tea box is the unique Thing about our bookstore, because not only are we a bookstore and um, we, we, we specialize in African-American books, but we love books from every culture, every diversity. And what we do is we pair a book with a custom, uh, with this signature blend, handcrafted tea. And those teas are made by myself. Um, and each month, our subscribers will receive a book picked out by myself and a tea along with the trinket that they receive each month. And we call it the book tea box. And it works really well for your steeping, your reading and your relaxing. It's, it's something that everyone can enjoy. It's such a joy just to see you on Instagram in the boxes. I always, of course, because I'm an author and I love to support other authors, I love seeing what book is in there. But I've heard you say in interviews that you were coming home from work and you just realized that that combination of reading and a cup of tea really changed what you were doing in your life. It really did. Um, for the last 10 years, I was a, a state employee and I dealt with some of the, um, some of the most um, horrific driving records that you can even think about. Um, and it was a lot going on um, in the position that I had. And so often I would come home and I also have small kids. I would come home just beat up from the day. And I was think, what can I do to leave this at the door? Because you need to get home and be able to enjoy that family life and learn to turn off the day. And I know there were so many other people out there, men and women everywhere that went through the, the same things that I did, the long work days, the constant overtimes, the long hours, and even leading over into the weekends. And we did not have that time for ourselves which was really important for us healthy wise, um, mental health wise, and for our families as well. So I would sometimes it started on a break when I needed a break throughout the day to break up the time. I would grab a book. I started keeping lots of books, you know, in my desk area. And I would just grab, you know, if I could just 15 minutes just to tune out. And although I was in that workspace, Mentally, I was somewhere else. I could be anywhere in the world with just a book. And so I said, you know what? I need to transform that feeling into people as well with them relaxing with the book, steeping their tea, relaxing and taking their thoughts anywhere. And you've done that. You can really, you can subscribe. So you can get a whole series of, 
uh, book and bookish experiences. I was also attracted to you, and this is a very different kind of storyteller show for me. Normally, I am interviewing authors who have written wonderful books, sometimes reporters who are telling America's story. But I chose to interview you because you want to share the gift of multiple stories. You're also an entrepreneur, and that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I've started four different companies. And as you and I have chatted in preparation for today, I love your entrepreneurial nature. So is this a new venture for you? It is. Uh, that job that I was telling you about, I decided to resign and move full-fledged with Book Queens uh, this May of 2021. So we have been in existence um, for one year now. <laughs> oh, it was really a uh, really uh, good thing to celebrate because I did decide to take that leap of faith into entrepreneurship. Um, there were many times I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? But my need to want to be literacy partners with so many people like yourself and authors all over the world, those connections and relationships that I wanted to make fueled my passion. And uh, a little voice tell me, just, just do it, Michelle, just do it. And so here we are <laughs> a year later, you know, and here I am, you know, being interviewed by the fabulous Grace Salmon. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> life could well, be greater than this. Well, you know, what a wonderful Christmas present. Oh, um, uh, well, you're very, very kind to say that. But I'm fascinated by this entrepreneurial piece, especially your an online bookstore. That was not the original intent. Well, it, it started off as just a book club with, with a couple of friends. Uh, honestly, it, it, I had about 10 friends and I would, you know, choose a book. I would do a little survey, kind of get everyone's reading interest. And then I would decide a book for the group and we would, you know, read and we would get on Zoom. And I mean, a mom could be, you know, in the grocery store. Another mom could be sitting down. Another mom could be cooking. You know, we would all because we all had these fast paced lives and it started off as just a group. And um, during COVID, honestly, I opened up during COVID. So which was uh, another show that I was uh, interviewed for, for people who started their businesses uh -huh. during a, a pandemic. <laughs> but uh, the vision was there. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, I got with someone and, and they helped me, you know, design the website. And, you know, we started picking inventory and logos and, Things just started, you know, just started flowing. And before you know it, um, I was established to do business. In the, in and here the, you are. And here I am. Queen. You're a book queen. So <laughs> why books? Why, why this way to communicate your passion for books? Because I can reach so many people this way. Although I can't wait to get a fabulous location because I want people to be able to come in, sit down, read a book, um, order a cup of tea, one of my handcrafted teas. I want you to be able to experience that with me in a location. But for now, I can reach people everywhere. That's the thing I want. I don't just want people here in Sacramento to, you know, read my books, Sacramento, California. I want people in, in every country. I want book tea everywhere. You know, I want I want to be able to talk to someone in Asia. I want to be able to communicate with someone, Jamaica, you know, Africa, England. I want to be able to have book queens everywhere and be able to, you know, get those collaborations. So there's no way I could just do that in one location. So that's why I went online uh, with the bookstore. And this really has been the gift if we need to find gifts in the pandemic, right? You and I would have never met. We would have never talked about how do entrepreneurial women support entrepreneurial women. And that has been such a huge gift that we are in Scotland one day, we're in England in the afternoon, we're in Spain later that day, and now we're in Sacramento, California. Absolutely. So, Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it, it is. Talk to me about tea and a hand. I know nothing about tea. How do you design a blend? How do you pair it with a book? It's not like a wine tasting. How does right. that all work? And tell me about your grandmother. Tell me about your grandmother. Oh, gosh, that wonderful woman. Uh, my grandmother was the best. You know, I know everyone thinks their grandma's the best, but mine truly was. Uh, <laughs> she was a true, true woman of God. Uh, she was giving. 
Uh, she ran a nonprofit homeless shelter. So I grew up uh, giving people in East Oakland, California. Uh, she housed hundreds of families, women and children, and gave employees, uh, gave jobs to people that uh, probably would have been turned down by other employers. So she was a, a, a second chance person. She truly believed in people. And she instilled that in me, the, the gift of giving and doing something from the heart. Um, and not expecting something in return and to know that the true gift is to give. So with that, um, I, she always gave, I had a first cousin, we grew up like sisters and we would always have tea parties. We would, she always bought us China sets. Some were the little plastic ones you would get as a kid, but some were the really nice ones that she would let us put up with her China. So you knew th that was the good set that we would play with sometimes. And um, it was just something that was so nice. We would mix these teas and tea bags back then. We would use tea bags and mix it with the creams and our sugars and our honeys as little kids and, you know, sit there and talk and have tea parties. And she just loved to watch us uh, play like that. And during some of the tough times, I had to draw back to a happy place. And we have to find that happy place that brings us joy and to learn how to transform that joy into other people. And that's where the tea component came in. I love to read. I love to reach people. Now, let me start making these tea blends that um, they just sparkle on your palate. They give you so many different flavors and aromas, the smells. You're just, you know, captivated by just sipping this cup and reading this book. And you feel like you are there. <laughs> you are just emerged. <laughs> so how do you do that? I love, I've never thought of sparkling on my palate, quite honestly, <laughs> with the tea. So, and tea is really a lost art form, right? There's, you know, there used to be afternoon tea across mm -hmm. cultures. And certainly mm -hmm. there are still cultures that, and individuals who cherish that. But I right. think it was much more dominant um, in the past. So right. how do you how do you build a tea, Michelle? Uh, well, I start, it depends on, each book is themed. So each book has, uh, like December, you know, is what I call my cocoa cozy. So they're cozying up with eaves. Uh, my tea blend <laughs> with, yeah, the eaves is featured uh, for December's book tea box. I'm excited, my book. Yes, they're cozy up with the oolong and it's my rendition of cocoa because of the time of the year. So I build from the, the theme of the box. That's kind of where my tea blends go with. Uh, I have three of my signature blends that are going to always um, be in circulation. One is called a lemon berry hibiscus. And that is a, a play of iced tea that I love, something I just like to keep in the refrigerator. I love the flavors. I love the richness of the colors. It reminds me of a book, you know, some of the vines, the feeling. So the, that's how I begin to, you know, create and collaborate. Um, another one I love because I love Thai food. I have what I call a vanilla blue and it's a vanilla blue PT with um, Madagascar vanilla that I use and a couple of other things. I don't want to give up my whole recipe, but it's, it's such a blue color when you pour it and it's so creamy in nature. It just reminds me of somewhere that I want to be in Asia, just reading about, you know, everything that goes on. And um, it's a really fan favorite. And then my first original tea is the powerhouse greens. And that's something that you want early in the morning doing affirmations. You know, I'm this, I'm that I can do it. I got this. You know, those are the things that I want you to think about when you're drinking the teas and, and also with reading it, you know, it, it just collaborates really well together. Um, the greens, the fruits that I use in there, it, it's a powerhouse for you. It's something you can drink daily, hot or cold, depending on the choice. And um, truly that's um, how I build my blends are based on the books that I'm reading. And just, you you must have a hypothecary of books. Uh, I'm sorry, a hypothecary of blends. And you go, oh, I just think I want to put some Madagascar vanilla in that. Or do, well, do you make bad teas sometimes and go, oh, that was a mistake? Yes. <laughs> a lot of trial and error. Like, oh, no, 
that's so good. Um, yes, I have so many herbs and um, different teas and blends. I use a local distributor here. Everything's organic and handcrafted, made in small batches because it is curated just for book queens. And um, it's it, it, it goes to... Um, like I said, the sparkling of the palate, the different flavors, the different aromas, the things that you wouldn't normally try, the things you're not going to get, you know, in a little white bag. These are all loose leaf teas. So, you know, you got to have your mesh ball. It's a true experience. I call it, you know, it's it's a full vibe. You know, you have to go through your steeping and, you know, you go through tasting. You know, what was that taste? Oh, that's that tastes like pomegranate. Oh, wow. Is that a blackberry in there? You know, it, it's just like the palate is is immersed trying to figure out what's going on. And it's just comfortable. It actually, it's just a relaxing thing. I'm never going to drink tea the same way. And it's funny, a, a friend of mine stopped over this morning and said, could I have a cup of tea? And I thought, oh, this is amazing. And she asked for tea and I'm going to actually talk to the book queen today who's an herbalist and she hated all of my teas. So I have to. Oh, we got that. We so, have to. So you, you and I need, you and I need to talk. I'll need to do better on my teas for <laughs> sure. Yes. Um, one of the things that intrigues me, and you and I haven't had a chance to touch base on this at all. One of the things that intrigues me is to be an online bookseller in the world of Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or any of those others that we probably shouldn't mention. Right. Obviously, you have a niche, but this is a bold entrepreneurial step to step out there. How do you even attract customers? Now I'm into my entrepreneurial hat. Well, because there are some big weight competitors out there that I will never be able to compete with. I had to stand out, you know, with, with my story, the story, like you said, we're storytellers, the story that I have to tell when you come by and I'm vending, or if, you know, if you read my uh, bio or if you ever get a chance to talk to me or just kind of follow me, I think that it's me, my personality, my need uh, for community, my need to want to uh, educate the community is, is what's making me stand out because they are, uh, of course, we all, we're all here to make money. Don't get me wrong, but Mine is a more of a personal experience and it's, uh, it's not just going to buy a book on Amazon or one of those, oh, excuse me, one of those big websites <laughs> and you don't know them. You know me, you know, the owner of book Queens, you can reach out to me. I, I don't think you can reach out to those big wigs and they're going to get back to you. If there's a customized book that I don't have on the website, you can send me a, a email and I'll get it for you. I'll customize that order for you. If there's a, a book tea box that you want, you know, for a friend or, you know, a, a gift for someone, I can customize that for you. And I think it's the experience is what I'm giving uh, customers is why they choose book queens over others. And you could do that for a whole book club too. You could, we could contact Absolutely. you and say, gosh, my book club is going to read this book. And you could put together lovely gift boxes for that. Absolutely. I do it for, you know, managers, for their teams. Uh, I do order books for team buildings. Uh, you know, someone will call me. Uh, I just got a, uh, the owner of the office space that I rent. Uh, he had did three boxes from me and he said, Michelle, I want you to take my whole Christmas list. And you sent everybody on this Christmas list, a book tea box. It's the wow. largest order that I've had this year. It, it, I was blown wonderful. away. I was blown That's away. That's wonderful. Oh. And I do think it's that connection that you make. And today we redefine community differently, right? I know that your main focus is on the African-American culture and community, but I love that you talked about, and that's how you and I connected among, you know, our work in terms of diversity. You and I have a community of being entrepreneurs. We have a community of loving books. And our community is much more global now because of the pandemic. But we also have the real sense, I love when I get to see you because you know that I do a lot of research on my guests. I love when you're being featured as a local entrepreneur in your community. But there's also something that you're trying to accomplish that I'd love our listeners to know about in terms of giving back to your community with the academic book boxes? Yes. Um, 
this, like I said, I would, I come from a woman who taught me to give. So in order for me to be in business, I had to find a component where I can give. And one of the best things you can do for a child is give them a book to read and make sure that they're having the things that they need in order to make sure that they get their education. And I believe education is important for every child. I don't care what race, what color you are. Book Queens is, is full of diversity. While we do um, want to be, you know, the have the largest <laughs> selection of African-American books, um, we are a community bookstore. We are a family bookstore for everyone, and it starts with our children. And so uh, we do have a donation uh, link on our website. And what we do is with some of the proceeds of the business, we give back to what we call an academic book box to a deserving child uh, that might need some help with some books that might need some uh, supplies for school. You know, we reach out to a child that, you know, needs some assistance and also encourage them to continue to read because with the reading, it can take you out of a, a you know, a, a scary place. It can take you anywhere. It can show you where you want to go and, you know, and allow you to get there. So it is so important, so important that we make sure that we're taking um, the initiative to give back to the community and the children. And it's one of the greatest gifts um, that I'm able to do as being a business owner. And I'm also a mother too. And, you know, it, I, I can't put enough emphasis on how important it is to make sure that we're getting books back into the hands of our children. And I love that you did that and did it so early in the part of your business. Many Many of us, many of us who have started business or have worked with businesses, they think, well, I can't do that yet. And you from Jump Street have said, this is part of your mission. And I just love that. So thank you for uh, doing that and your focus on literacy. I usually like to wrap up our interviews with something maybe quirky or different uh, about you that would make people want to know more about you. Got anything <laughs> you want to share? Oh, well, I am goofy. No one believes that, but uh, I'm really goofy. Uh, I love to laugh. I love to host. Um, and that's probably how the tea party started as a little girl. I love to host and um, I, I do something what we call Queens talk. And um, it's where I get to make mimosas and, you know, treats kind of similar to those fabulous boards that you make on Fridays. <laughs> oh my God. I, mean, I love those boards. Oh my God. They look so great. I'm like, Oh my God, I got to get to her house. Um, Someday you'll love- make me tea and I'll make you a charcuterie board. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I just love to host and um, I love to travel. Um, going to Jamaica next week. Um, and uh, they call me Jamaican because <laughs> I love Jamaican so much. I go so much. I'm half Jamaican, half American. So um, those are the core. American. I love it. American. I love it. I, I just love Michelle, to this, hang with people. This has been an honor just to have you on the microphone, to get to see you face to face has been a real joy. Thank you for being a storyteller and sharing the stories. And this has been a copyrighted episode of The Storytellers by Authors on the Air, Global Radio Network, and Grace Salmon. Michelle, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Grace. Have a wonderful day. That concludes this episode of The Storytellers. I'm so glad you could be part of the story today. I hope you share the stories, tell your own, and come back for another episode. Because when our stories are told, everything changes. I'm Grace Salmon.